and we call it three up, three down, just to keep the baseball theme. So basically what we do is Alex will ask you a question. I'll ask you a question. We each get three questions. You don't have to answer super fast. It's not rapid fire or anything. It's just kind of six different questions for you to answer. And Alex starts. So Alex, why don't you start us off with your question? All right. So the first one for the three up, three down, what is your favorite movie of all time? Uh, the one who flew up the cuckoo nest. <laughs> That's an old school movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, my first question, do you prefer drinking out of glass or plastic cups? Glass. I glass. prefer glass. Yep. Number two, what is your biggest pet peeve? Oh, man. I don't have one. I really don't. You know, <laughs> give me another one. Give me another one. Let me think about right. that one. All right. What is... One piece of sports memorabilia you don't own that you wish you owned? I don't own. Uh, probably more of like my gloves uh, from playing in like playoffs, World Series, stuff like that. You know, I, I think those are memories that you will always cherish that, that, that I wish I would have kept those mm. in my days. Now, did they take them from you or like for, for anything or did you, you know, just get rid of them? I just got rid of them. I just eventually got rid of them. You know, I had so many of them and, you know, I had, uh, I had an agent who collected all that memorabilia stuff and, you know, he wanted all that stuff. So I just kind of assigned it over to him and gave it to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so from all the people that you've played with or even anybody after your playing days, uh, this could just be anybody who's the greatest leader you've ever seen in person or worked with before. The greatest leader I've probably ever seen in person and played with probably was Derek Jeter, uh, more than anybody. A, a guy that was uh, really, really humble, but had great leadership quality about himself. He didn't talk about it. He didn't, he didn't boast about it. I mean, it's just a, he was an example of how you go out and play the game. And if you go back and you look at him and you look at his career and look at the player he was there, even if he hit a ground ball, how he bust his tail down first base, he hustled like never before. You, you just don't see a lot of players uh, play like that. He played like that every day. And, and that was, he played like that for 20 years. You know, that was pretty incredible. You know, when I first saw him in 95, come up in 96 and, and saw him play. And, and I, re I realized that this guy had some great leadership and great qualities about himself. The third one for me You've done a lot of interviews. You've spoke in front of a lot of people, and I'm sure a lot of questions have been asked your way. What is one question, though, you've never been asked before in an interview that you've always wanted to have been asked? Oh, I, I, I think probably more than anything is, is the importance of, of family. Uh, people really never ask you about your families, uh, you know, um, and I think that's I think that's missing in a lot of interviews a lot of times because people always want to be in certain details about who you are. But at the same time, they don't realize that you have family that's important and what's really important in life. And, uh, and I think a lot of times that get uh, pushed to the side. I, I think that's why we are, are living in a society today that's broken, that's divided, uh, because we've gotten away from the, the real important things as, as the family values and, and, and the table talks. You know, we've gotten away from what it used to be like when I was growing up, where we all sat down and had dinner together and we talked about real things. And I think that's important. Well, Alex and I need to start taking notes because you're not the first person that we've asked that question to that's given that pretty much the same answer. So that's really, that's really good for us because we can, you know, we can get better at that and start, you know, we can start really digging in with people about their families if they want to, you know, if they want to talk about it. Um, so my last question, and it's my most important question, is what is the best position in baseball? Well, I, I would have to say it's probably the catcher. Uh, you know, I, I would have to probably say that because – and the reason why I say that is because he's controlling the game. You know, he's controlling the pitcher. He's controlling uh, every part of what the game is all about. And, and I think a lot of times I think they don't really seem to get all the credit that they deserve uh, because it, it, takes a, it takes a good leader behind the plate to make a good rotation go well. Um, and, and I remember seeing that, you know, several times, you know, when I, 
when I played, Carter Carter was that when I played with the Mets and and I seen Joe Girardi play with the Yankees. You know, he was a good leader as far as the catcher of calling the game behind the plate. You know, was he multi talented? No, but I mean he could he can call a game. You know, when a guy can call the game, it's gonna put you in a better situation to have a, a better outcome, you know, when you think about when you think about the pitching staff. Because you can have a great rotation and a lot of teams have great rotations and they can't get nowhere. If the catcher's not, you know, if he's not controlling the situations and giving up big hits when, when you know you're supposed to have certain pitch, you know, throwing certain pitch pitches, you know, guys, that's not really up to the pitcher. That's really up to the catcher who's making that decision. And I've seen some pretty good catchers make decisions like that. And I, I think that's why we were very successful as teams, you know, because of our catchers, the way they went and the way they handled ball games, uh, led us to being able to go come back and win ball games and stay in ball games. Mm-hmm. A follow-up to that, what was your favorite team you played on? Well, my favorite team was the Mets, you know, the, the 1986 Mets. You know, that was a, a group of guys that would had, had a bunch of wild personalities. We were totally different. And, you know, we, we, we loved coming to the ballpark. We loved playing. And, and we just wasn't in any fear or any doubt about who we were. You know, we, we were going we to whoop your butt. You know, that was just the way it was. And, you know, we came like gangbusters, you know, and, and we played well together. And that was really my favorite team. Were you surprised that there wasn't another World Series championship that followed that team? I was surprised. You know, I, we lost in 88 to the Dodgers. Um, we had beat them all, all that year, and they beat us in that 88 playoff series, and it broke our heart. Yeah, I was, I was surprised that we never followed up with any um, uh, championships after that because we were so talented, and we just you just did. But you have, to, you have to have a team that comes back after winning that has to be healthy, and we lost our rotation in 87, and then we got better in 88. And in 89, you know, uh, we lost some more players, and we started losing players, and then – you know, the 90 season we lost it, I believe it was to the Pirates. You know, they they started, you know, they had you know some pretty good players over there, Bonds, Bonillas, Bobby Bull, and um Van Ben Slyke, I mean, yeah, those guys were over there. But there we want to say thank you so much again for taking the time to come on the podcast. Where can people you I know you don't have Twitter, so I guess uh would you ever consider joining Twitter? No, I don't I don't really I'm not a really big fan of Twitter. I think people go on there to debate. I'm not a person that likes to debate. You know, I'm on Instagram, Instagram, Daryl Strawberry 18, but you know, they can find me on my web web page, you know, findingyourway.com, you know, and that's where the book is and everything. You know, it's just, it's a great time, great season, you know, great season. I, I didn't know God would give me a book when we were in the midst of a pandemic that would call turn your season around. As you know, turn your season around is like a baseball season. Uh, the media used to write me off sometimes and say I had a first bad half of the season, but what they forgot I had 80 games to play, you know, and 80 games is a lot of games in the second half. And that's for people in life too. don't quit, you know, because what we've been through, you know, our first half of this year or whatever has been six, eight months, you know, there's a whole nother second half that you got to look at that you can fulfill the promises. And I went on to fulfill the promises of that season and go on to have a great season. So it's just the same game in life. 